Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to be talking about getting started building your own LEGO Speed Champions models. Now in today's video I'm going to talk a bit about my experience with building my own models and kind of some tips and stuff. And then we're going to ask your guys' questions to some expert model builders and see what they have to say about starting building your own models. So, as you can see, I have some experience building some cars, so I thought we'll talk about uh, some stuff that I've realized that might help you with building your own models. So let's just say you're completely new to this. Let's just say you found the channel recently. And so I'd say the best way to get started is just to buy one Speed Champion set, because to build a Speed Champion style model, you have to have some certain parts like the wheels and the fenders. Other than that, just honestly, you, most parts are not Speed Champion specific. But those two parts, you will need to build any model. So really, if you want to get started, the best way, go buy one of the one pack sets that's available right now. Like right, like right now, as of making this video, you can get the Lamborghini Countach, the Lotus Avaya, or the Ferrari 512. I actually get, don't get the Ferrari 512. That has some parts that you don't need. To get the Lamborghini Countach or the Lotus Avaya, one of those two sets, or both even, will have enough parts to just start building your own models out of those parts. So obviously you should probably start by building the set because, you know, it's fun. And also besides that, it'll give you some ideas as to how these uh, models go together. And then maybe after you're done, you can modify them a bit. Like say, if there's something you want to change up, you know, you can add some things. If you want to kind of know a bit more about modifying them, I have a video which I made a while back, which I'll link to down below. And, and then once you're done, you can either go to Rebrickable, which is a website where you can get people's custom instructions for Lego models. And that way you can find what people have built with the same parts that are included in these sets. For example, we go to Rebrickable, we look for the Kunchash set, we scroll down here, and then you can see we have all these other models people have built. Quite a few of these are free, so I just recommend you know, we're trying to build some of them. And if you don't want to try and build any of these, just take it apart yourself and just try and build something yourself with the parts, because this is honestly the best way just to get an idea of how stuff goes together. Now, if you do already have a bunch of LEGO parts, that's great, because then you can just use those parts and combine them maybe with a Speed Champion set, or if you already have some Speed Champion sets, then you can just take some of those apart, try and build them into other things, try and build other people's models. If you have enough parts, you can try and build other people's completely, entirely custom models, which are not alternate builds, and you can buy some instructions, although there are plenty of free instructions out there. I have some free instructions and tutorials, which you can follow. I'll link all of those down below. That's another excellent way to see how these models go together and just kind of get a bit more experience. Really, when it comes to building these cars, and probably building any LEGO, and really doing pretty much anything, honestly, the more experience, the better. You'll just have, you know, you'll know how parts go together, and you'll know what, what parts work well together, what parts don't, and what parts exist, and what parts don't, and all kinds of stuff like that. And so honestly, just buying one speed champion set and rebuilding it as many times as you can, you'll learn how all the different parts go together if you're new to it. And if you already know how LEGO roughly goes together, then building some other people's models will help you figure out how the custom models of these cars go together. And so yeah, that's kind of my main thing to start. Just like basically the more models you build, the better and better you'll get at it. Still have a long way to go when it comes to experience. There are people out there who are way more experienced than me. And we're actually gonna ask them some questions about starting out right after this. But yeah, basically the more models you can build, the more instruction manuals you can even just look through and the more tutorial videos you can even just watch, you don't even have to like follow them. That would That is really, really just the best way to get experience and that'll help you get better and better when it comes to building these models. So when you do start to build your own models, a and you kind of can't really figure out what technique, how this part will connect to this kind of thing. I highly recommend that what you do is you try and figure out, well, what's a similar existing Speed Champion set? And then you can look up that set on the LEGO website where you can download the free manuals for the sets and then basically just look through the manual, I'll link to that down below as well, and find the part where that part connects and just try and replicate that on your model. And that way, that's kind of honestly the easiest way to figure out how it goes together. Now, if you have bought some sets and assembled them, then you might already know some of these techniques and that can be very handy, but if you can't, buy a whole bunch of sets, then this is a great way to learn some techniques without having to buy all the sets. Now in today's video, because we're talking more about just getting started, we're not going to talk about actual techniques to get started with. We're probably going to do that in a future video, but this is another thing where a lot of tutorial videos can come in handy because you can see the parts being assembled. So I'll just link to a bunch of them down below that you can go check out and that could be really good to watch to learn techniques. Now another thing is that if you have limited parts and maybe you're getting tired of using the same parts over and over, you can download Studio or Stud.io, I suppose it is called, which is basically a completely free digital Lego designing software and it's owned by the Lego group now. And yeah, basically you have access to as many parts as you want. You can just build whatever you want. I use this all the time to design my models and it's completely free and you can just download it for free. You don't, need to, you don't need to give your email or anything. It's literally just entirely free. So then as you build more and more models, they'll get better and better. Eventually you get to a point where you're happy with them, but maybe you can tell that they could still be improved, but you're not really sure how. And that's where it can be handy to either post them on say Instagram or YouTube, or you could join the car building Discord server and post them there if you want and get some feedback there. But once you got to the point where you're pretty happy with them, but you feel like they could be improved a bit, and so posting them on the internet can be very useful for that because especially on Instagram and also in the Discord server, we have a lot of very experienced builders who will see your stuff and then kind of give some useful feedback as to what you could change here and there. And when you're trying to build your own models, honestly, just build whatever you want. Like if any, because just because 10 other people have built the event or doesn't mean that you can't attempt to build the event or yourself. Although it might be more fun to build something else. But hey, yeah, if you want to build the vendor, just like go for it. Just whatever car you want to build, build it. It doesn't matter if you want to like throw on the rear end of like 
that Ferrari F12 on an event or like whatever. If you think it looks good and you're just building models and having fun, then that's kind of the whole point. It doesn't have to look realistic as long as this is kind of just a hobby. And so the main point is to have fun doing it. And so, yeah, that's kind of the whole point. I mean, obviously you probably do not want to put the rear of a Ferrari F12 on an event or basically, you know, just do whatever you want. It's like, this is, it's not like any rules really. So it doesn't matter. Build the cars as wide as you want or as narrow as you want. It's just like, as long as you're having fun with this, that's really all that counts, I guess. And now I'm repeating myself. But anyway, that's kind of the main point, I suppose. That was kind of all the tips I could think of when it came to getting started. So I decided to ask you guys on Instagram and YouTube, if you were new to building models or if you are new to building models, what questions would you ask? And I asked these questions to some really experienced mock designers. And so let's see what they said. I'm David from Bricks, Blocks and Mocks on YouTube, on Instagram and on TikTok, and I mainly build eight stud wide cars. Hi, I'm Owen. Um, I run Custom Creations, another YouTube channel. You might have heard of it. I'm Leo, so I'm often known as Leo One or Leo One Lego on Instagram. So I tend to make a lot of Lego car mocks. Hi, I'm Thomas from Vancouver Customs, the man of Lego Volvos, as you may know. Um, I just build cars, engines, trucks, you name it, in my spare time. Hi everyone, my name is Esbazian, I'm a freelance LEGO model designer. My passions are mainly architecture, cars, of course, and uh, LEGO. I'm the G-Brix, the man behind the crazy cars. Uh, I'm 34, I live in Eastern Europe, and I'm a 3D artist, a freelancer. My name is Nato Bong, or maybe mo most of you probably know me as NV Carmox. Um, I am a graphic designer. Uh, I study graphic designing, but I spend most of my free time, actually pretty much all of my free time, making um, Lego models, as you see behind me. We also have LH Mox, who did not want to be in the video, but who is one of the best six wide builders out there. And so he also provided some answers to your questions, and so I'll be reading them myself. I usually start with the front and then move on from there. Uh, I think I do the, the like roof line uh, last uh, most of the time. So go from the front and then kind of move backwards and then do, do the roof line. Uh, the last thing I design basically. Yeah, so like I usually just do it in the studio and then, I mean, once I have a front end, it, it gets a little bit easier from there because I always do the front first and then, you know, like to the sides, to the rear, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. You might know Sariel's bricks and that so Yeah, he's got a scaler tool for making blueprints. So I use that a lot because then I can really get my models accurate. I usually go from like front to back and try and come up with like an intricate front design and then work through the rest of it. Uh, that's really specific to the model, but usually it's an important detail that defines the model. As mentioned prior for the Corvette, I was it was the size, and for example, when building my Jaguar XR9, I started with the nose, especially the headlights, to get that angle and to get that shaping right. I search for reference pictures, mostly, uh, mainly from the side view. That's that's very important, especially because of the rear base, because the rear base is the base of the whole design. And I usually start with uh, throwing in pieces into the studio. Uh, with the wheels and stuff, and uh, I check them against in uh, Photoshop against the side view or the blueprint. Well, I often start with the front, even before the uh, before I make the chassis, because uh, as mentioned previously, I, the, the front is obviously ob most of the time where the hardest uh, areas are. I usually start with the car's front end because that's the most recognizable part of the car. Just find a good picture from the internet and start shaping grill, vents, and headlights. I, I very rarely like to completely finish the front before I move on to, let's say, the rear. Uh, so I basically, I, I try to finish most of the front and try to come up with something that I think looks okay. Then I move on to the rear uh, most of the time or the sides or something like that. I mean, I already explained this, but like when starting, I of course start with the front end and then I usually move back to like, kind of like the doors and like the sides of the car. And then I usually do the rear and then the last thing I do is like the C-pillars and stuff like that. And you know, the C-pillars are sometimes the hardest to do actually because uh, like you need to get them at like the right angle and to like match up with the roof. Um, but yeah, when, I, when, when you get like a good design, it's really satisfying to see it like all clicked together. But yeah, that's pretty much what I do. I often start with the, the wheelbase to get everything the perfect distance apart. And then just sort of start filling in details, normally with the sides 
and then either the front or back, whichever I have an idea for, and then finish up with the roof and interior. I guess right to the middle then. And then the interior is always last, just sort of, I don't want to compromise the outside for the inside since it's not seen as much. So I'll design everything and then put the seats in last and whatnot, which usually isn't a problem, but it works out really well. It really depends on how the car translates into Lego. Sometimes it's just getting the detail right, moving on to the next aspect and getting that right as well, et cetera, et cetera. But sometimes I can't quite figure out an aspect, like a roof line or a shoulder line, and then I leave it for some time to, to later come back with a fresh look. And I usually make sub-assemblies, like the front of the car, side intakes, uh, the canopy, or the back, uh, or just pieces themselves to uh, mimic a certain part of the car. And after I have the wheelbase, and after I have, I have mostly the sub-assemblies in place, <laughs> I come up with ways to stick them together. And then I make the chassis, and then I kind of go from the front to the... Uh... Just to the front wings, to the bonnet, uh, make the sides, uh, go to the rear, and then I'll do the, the roof and finish the last bits of the interior. I usually use brackets to shape the sides or brackets together with plates. Because the models are so small, I don't include opening doors, except some supercars like my McLaren 600LT. I do sometimes include an opening hood, though. That's, <laughs> I, I think the basic answer to that is just uh keep on building new models i mean yeah i like i just build my models and then like with everyone i like learn new techniques you know like learn new ways to build like faster more efficiently i think that's just got to come down to practice and also like i've only really started using blueprints quite recently but that's something that's really improved and making things look really accurate like improvement over time i think yeah. just practice Sorry. just keep working at it trying new and different techniques different pieces and then also downloading Speed Champions instructions off the LEGO website. You can look through and then figure out what they've got for ideas. This will really sound cheesy, but it, it, it's very true. Practice makes perfect. By building many cars, you learn new techniques, new ways to represent something or learn new styles to build from. Also, the community is a great way to learn. I always look for crazier uh, solutions. That's my thing. <laughs> and I try to avoid nine degree or uh, 45 degree solutions that's that's a typical lego problem because of the bricks and the, you usually end up with 60 45 or 90 degrees of angles and i try to avoid them one of the other things is the canopy because uh, with the factory solutions you always have uh, uh, four start top or six i try to go with five <laughs> because that's an odd number and it's it's harder but it's more realistic so it's mostly these two things you know trying to get more stronger and um using less and less illegal building techniques while also making the building experience fun for the uh the buyers um and so that, that it's mostly those two things and uh you know obviously um uh, these days i'm creating more at least in my opinion more uh realistic models and uh, if, if you look back at my first model so it's uh, definitely but strength and um the best way to improve is to watch other people's tutorials follow experienced builders on social media and obviously build sets uh use blueprints i think i think i think you can like get a bit blinded by looking at the bl blueprints too much you have to look at it from a lego perspective basically uh, so just like blindly following the blueprints usually don't turn out like the best to be honest i think you you shouldn't be afraid to go off the blueprints either uh, but yeah i usually like if I, especially if i have it in real life or something i like pull up the group uh, the blueprint and like match up the car and as long as like the general proportions are like pretty on point i mean i think it's pretty good like sometimes my cars are a bit like shorter than they should be um, but sometimes I just feel like it's almost like the Lego kind of scaling, I feel like works better to like a little bit of a shorter car instead of a longer car. I mean, that's just in my opinion, but yeah, that's pretty much how I usually get the proportions. Yeah, that's all just based off of the scale factor. So if you get 
like an eight stud wide car and then you get the width of the actual car and divide the two you get like a fixed number and then that number you can divide all the other values by and then you get the lego stud dimensions that you'll need and obviously it isn't perfect you can't really follow it to a t but it gives you an idea which is very helpful uh, proportions are a derivative of the scale i always start by gathering the real life dimensions of a car and then determining the scale factor since i have the predetermined width of the car being the eight studs and then what I do is, for example, if I have a car that is 2,000 millimeters wide in real life, and I build it in 8 studs wide, scale factor would then be uh, 2,000 divided by 8.5. Uh, the blueprint method, uh, mainly, I look for pictures which are not side views or top views, just some normal photos, and, uh, and I check the car from the same angle. Uh, to have the, the feel of it. Looking at reference materials, obviously, uh, especially side profiles, indeed. Um, uh, uh, and looking at things like, um, you know, obviously what the wheelbase is going to be. Most of the time it will be seven, eight or nine studs. And then also very important is where do the A pillars and, and the, 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 the B, C pillars, whatever, the last pillars actually of the, of the roof uh, connection. Where does the start, where do they start and where do they... Uh, connect to the roof actually. For side proportions, I always look at the real car's picture I'm building and, and base the proportions on wheel size, etc. In the in the beginning, I tried to like cram in as much details as possible. And in a way I kind of still do, but I think it's a, so much more important to have the model look really clean and sleek looking. I mean, I try to add as much detail as I can, but a lot of it's just limited by like, um, sometimes like the parts availability and sometimes just the strength of a model. Cause like, I mean, I can't, I can't add like all details, but I could add more details and on uh, like to compromise the strength of the model. But yeah, I usually like the model to be like, not like super flimsy. I mean, a lot of mine kind of are, but. I've got to get first the most characteristic details. So on my Pininfarina Batista again, there were these white stripes flowing from the front to the back. And I knew I had to get them in and the sloping sides. So that was really what I had to focus on. So you can give up the small details, like maybe some small vents that are just, it doesn't really add much to the car. I think it's just the details that are like responsible for making the car what it is. You can start drive yourself crazy and try and get everything perfect, but in the grand scheme of things, especially when it's smaller, it's just important to sort of get the front right, I would say, and then as much as you can of everything else. Uh, that depends on two aspects. First of which is the scale. The scale is too small for a detail, I won't include it. The, the other are stickers, of course. Specifically for my race cars, I use quite a lot of stickers. I start from the bigger details. That's usually uh, and uh, after that it's all compromise i don't know if uh, in the case of the contact from for the side intake i probably had 15 versions <laughs> before the final one yeah the key features which really represent the model are the, the ones i um, go for um because when you make an eight white model, you don't want it to look too messy. Um, and if you can include so many details, you can get uh, a very detailed model that people, because it's in such a small uh, scale, you know, all the details in one thing can become a little bit messy. So uh, going for a bit of a cleaner model by sometimes leaving away some little elements um, is, I think, a way to go. I obviously try to include as many details as possible, but for example, I'd rather have a well-shaped side than door handles. For interior, I usually don't do too many details because the scale is so small, I'd rather make the model fit a minifigure. Of course, I get a lot of requests from uh, all subscribers and followers and stuff like that. So most of the time I look at the requests. I guess the best ideas for me come from like seeing cars like in real life. Like, you know, I like, I remember seeing like an Evo once on the street, it was like, Pretty cool. I had like an intercooler sticking out to it, and, and that's basically like, um, or sticking out the bumper. And yeah, that's basically like where I got the idea to make my Evo. And then like, you know, I saw like this Supra once in Florida. That's when I built my Supra. So like, the ideas sometimes do come from pictures, but a lot of it is seeing it in real life. At least for me, it just really like sparks that idea and makes me just really want to build it. Well, it really depends because it might be, let's say, I've just seen one on the street, and I just think that's cool. Or quite often I try and make ones that other people haven't made before because then it stands out. Like I made the Pininfarina Batista. Stick to ones that you like because it can be hard 
to actually to have the dedication to make one that you don't really like. I'm not super broad in what kind of cars I build. It's mostly Volvos, and a lot of it's driven by what people order. If I play Forza and I find a car that I really like, sometimes that's a big driving factor for something I want to design. My main game I have consists out of uh, Lamar prototype cars. For instance, the, the hypercar class that is now going on, or the LMP1 before it, or even Group C going back to the 80s. And these cars are rarely built, and I only know a few others that build them. Oh, these creative surges that that I was talking about. And, and, and these cars are pieces of art for me, especially if uh, a talented designer made them, or they represent something, or they have... Uh, emotions in them like Daytona <laughs> or, or the front of the Roma or the whole side and, and the shape of the Roma. It's, it's, it's very emotional, very Italian. Whenever I feel that, that uh, a specific car have that emotion, which I want to connect to, okay, I, I, I start that car <laughs> right away. Most of the time I just build whatever I want. Uh, so I don't really do commissions or anything. I just build uh, what I'm in the mood for. And I'm, I'm a, so uh, I play a, a couple of car related video games where I sometimes come across cars, which I, uh, which I think oh, I'll give that, a, I'll give that a shot. Uh, but sometimes I, I just see a car on the street and I think, oh, actually, I really want to make that. So I'll just uh, uh, spend the rest of the day uh, looking forward to getting home in the evening and really getting, getting my bricks out. I either get ideas from cars I see in real life or in movies or videos. Sometimes I get ideas from parts and colors I have available. I wouldn't say the Speed Champions ones, to be honest. Of course, both you and me sell instructions and stuff like that. And I, I always like to push a bit, uh, like not, not, not only for my instructions, but for all like creators' uh, instructions. I think that's probably a better uh, way to get like inspiration and experience looking at instructions. Of course, you don't have to build the exact model that the instructions uh, show you. Oh uh, yeah, I would say so. I mean, to be honest, like I don't have that many speed champion sets. And sometimes I like watch like reviews, like especially like the ones by the racing brick are like uh, just really helpful and like really entertaining as well. Cause you can just see all the techniques and he makes it in like an entertaining way. I think that depends on what kind of builder you are and how experienced you are with building other sets. Because, yeah, I, I agree, lots of them have, like, they have a really good building techniques in which you could definitely use. But I find that a lot of them, actually, well, quite a few, I ha they are new to me, though I don't know how many I've used. But lots of them are, is quite traditional, like, just stacking on top of each other or just sideways. And it's pretty easy stuff. Um, before they had instructions, I would say yes. And it's still really fun to actually put it together in person and see how it works. Um, it can't really hurt to get the sets up because they're beautiful either way. And if you don't want to keep it forever, they have lots of good parts. 100% yes. The Speed Champions line in general is quite the innovative platform with small condensed models. This creates or expert models for them for an affordable price as well. I would definitely recommend picking up the, the Ferrari 512M the Lamborghini Countach and the 4GT uh, dual pack. Some of them are really good. For a junior builder or intermediate, it's it, it's good fun, I think. Like in the case of the new Ferrari factory set, it was awesome. From a building experience, the new Countach was awesome, awesome too, but I did not like the end result that much. Yeah, well, I wouldn't really uh, buy a set just because the building experience is fun. Because uh, in the, these days, that would mean you would buy pretty much every single Lego set. So not necessarily buying it, but definitely taking inspiration from it by looking the instructions up. It's definitely worth buying sets. Nowadays, they also have a lot of cool techniques that you can get ideas from. Uh, from Bricklink mainly, I have ordered a bit from Lego themselves, like the bricks and pieces. Uh, Bricklink, definitely. Um, that's pretty much my number one way to get pieces. Sets. Sets are really good for getting parts kind of quite cheaply. But then when I actually build the mock itself, I often need some extra parts. So I then buy them off Brick Owl and Bricklink. Um, all from Bricklink, pretty much. Um, some stuff I'll get from sets, but not very often. 
Now, however, they uh, I exclusively buy on Bricklink, and the reason for that is that Lego recently changed their only service to uh, pick a brick, which I don't quite like. I've had a ton of parts for a long time, as I've been a Lego fan since I was a child, but I usually get my parts either from sets or from Bricklink. I think, again, the, the a great tip is to move on to another model if you get stuck or move on, just do something else if you get stuck. And another, another thing actually, to be honest, that uh, like keeps me motivated throughout the build is that I'm actually gonna post it as well onto YouTube and uh, Instagram or whatever. That's uh, of course a big motivation as well. One thing that's very important as well is kind of not be too much of a perfectionist. I know I am, and I always say that I am in probably every single video or something, but to just finish the model and then move on to the next model. Honestly, I don't know. Like sometimes if I just start like a model and I think like the front end just looks like really good, it'll like give me like a lot of motivation to like finish the model because you know, I really want to see like how the rest will turn out. Um, sometimes like I don't really have that much motivation to be honest. Like when I was building my Aventador, I like had the front end just set for like a really long time and then it took me like three months to rebuild it, but, or to start building again. But that was just because I don't know, I like never built something that complicated before, but. I often have a part that I have already worked out how to make. Let's say there's some kind of distinctive front grill that I've worked out a good way to make that. So I'll start with that. And then sometimes I just get really stuck after that. And there's some part of the model that I just can't, I can't work out. And often for that, I either just move on to another bit of the car and work on that while the other thing is just running in my mind and I'm just waiting until an idea pops into my head. But sometimes I just leave it. I just leave the model and I just leave it for a week and have it just out so I can see it. And then, because sometimes when you're just looking at it, something suddenly appears in your mind and then you can just do it. Um, if it's something for myself, a lot of times I don't, but if it's for a customer car, um, obviously I'll make a little bit of money off of that, which allows me to keep going, but also the satisfaction that people get from something I make for them is really important. And I appreciate the fact that people like what I do. So it kind of helps me keep on keeping on. Oh, that's just me. I like to get things uh, done. Sometimes I can't quite figure out a model and then leave it for some time to work on a new one. I do have always come back to finish a model and I still have no unfinished models if I'm... It's, it's a challenge in itself. So if I see a car, like I said, I, I, I want to do it. I want to do it completely and uh, I want to do it differently. So that, that's the motivation. Sometimes uh, I put them aside for a week or a month or two. Uh, well, well, actually, I do really love what I do. So these days... Um... If I have a bit of free time, I'll immediately get my bricks out and I'll make a new model. Um, often, because I just enjoy what I do, I can finish it in one day, one evening, uh, three to six hours work. You know, I, 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 it's just I really do enjoy building Legos. It's definitely my main uh, hobby. Uh, so when I get back from work, I'll, uh, I'll immediately start working on a new model. Um, and you know, because I. At some point, you start building, and you see, oh, this is, you think, oh, this is getting uh, pretty good, you know, and and uh, so you want to keep on building it, so hoping it uh, turns out as good as as it could be. If I like how it's going, I have more motivation to finish it. Sometimes it's good to take a break if you don't have any good ideas. But like everyone, I also sometimes fail. And so that's what I had to say. And hopefully, that was very helpful because I enjoyed hearing your answers. Hopefully, you did too. You can go follow all of them on the internet at various places, YouTube, Instagram, and all that. I have the links in the description below. And I highly recommend you go check them out because they are some of the best builders that I know of. Also, in case you were looking for some inspiration when it comes to building your models, I've actually put together this playlist here on YouTube of videos and stuff that are inspiring, I guess, to build models. And so, yeah, it's basically just a big collection of stuff. I highly recommend you go and check out each individual channel here that I've linked to because each of these, all these channels are really good. This is basically just one of my favorite videos from each channel. And so, yeah, I just, this is just kind of, if you watch a couple of these videos, I think you'll feel a bit more inspired if you don't really feel inspired enough to build something. And so I guess that's it for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this video is helpful. 
And uh, if you want, have any more questions or anything, leave them in the comments below. And like I said, we'll probably have another video where we show some techniques that are useful if you're just getting started uh, pretty soon here in the future. And yeah, I guess that's it for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.